Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Samuel Adams Returns, the Anti-Federalist. Yes, they did. They absolutely got it right here on Liberty Works Radio Network, where liberty works for you. Now, uh, one of the things I didn't explain uh, from the first segment is for those of you who are watching on video, and I'm going to have to put up the, you know, the notes on it in YouTube, is that, yes, there's three, let me do that again, one, two, three, three segments to the program, and uh, on Liberty Works Radio Network, when the producers put all this together, it is fabulous in what they do, and what Dick does in taking and, you know, melding all the different commercials uh, around what the program is. Sometimes I think, he he tells me, no, that's all automated, you know, Tom, it's all just, you know, picked up by... on automation, it just fills in. I think about it and I go, Dick, you know what? You put this together in such a phenomenal way and the way that those uh, advertisements come in on on the programming, it's like, nah, dude, you're a real producer and you plan this thing out. So Dick, thanks a lot for the way that you produce it. And for you folks that are watching on YouTube, you have to go check out Liberty Works Radio Network. I mean, they have been for years doing a phenomenal work. What they're what they're doing is uh, not just uh, you know from a national market perspective. It's internet radio that also touches into other market opportunities. But you know something, they're a real ministry. They're they're talking about what's important and what the founders understood. The framework of liberty is sourced from an understanding of the First Great Awakening, uh, as I left off, the Reformation, left off in the first segment, and how that applies in self-governance. How do we, it's what our founders expected is, yeah, you, governing yourself, and then being able to come into society. And how does that work? Well, if you don't understand the biblical principles, the truths of all of that, from the First Great Awakening, then you can't understand the Constitution. You can understand all the theoretical stuff and apply all the humanistic stuff, I call it stuff, to it. But until you understand what the First Great Awakening and how that brought into self-governance first and then into general governance, well, you know, that's it. But Liberty Works Radio Network, there I go, off topic again a little bit. I, I do that, you know. You take and you start putting me down uh, some rabbit hole, and uh, I, I usually miss the first tunnel out. So the, uh, the Liberty Works Radio Network, ladies and gentlemen, that is you. It is all about you and the fact that it is, yes, a listener-funded program, a listener-funded radio program, station, network, ministry, you know, I'm sure hoping that some of you folks go check out the other host and hostesses, uh, live programming uh, that's during the week where someone's there. Really, you can pick up the phone and talk to them. I don't have that opportunity from my studio here, uh, although I have done one live interview. And we're going to be looking at doing some more of that because I think it's really important. And uh, figuring out that technology that you know, how do you put that other person in the split screen? Well, you know, it'd be interesting to figure that on, on the video, especially so I don't have the person backwards like I do when I hold up a book or put up a sign. Uh, that would be kind of uh, embarrassing to have your guest, you know, do you really get the back of their head or is their right ear on their left ear? I, I don't know. But anyway, I, I'd really appreciate you contributing uh, again to Liberty Works Radio Network. Yeah, I think it's a great network. And I sure appreciate everything they've been doing for Samuel Adams returning those anti-federalists. Uh, they got it absolutely correct. Especially when you take and you look at, once again, as we dig into who Melanchthon Smith is. And some of the things that he argued during the New York Convention. Ladies and gentlemen, you know something? We're experiencing it today. People sit there, scratch their heads, and they're going... You know, I just don't get how Congress does this. I don't understand how the bureaucracy is the way the bureaucracy is. Why do we have all of these people in there? Blah, blah, blah. And then what they do is they moan and complain. Well, I have to tell you, it's because the Anti-Federalist 
got it right. And Melanchthon Smith being one of the ones that nails it. I mean, he just flat nails it during that New York convention. So let's go back here a little bit on who this character is. Uh, you know, his background, he was from New York. He got in there. He was born in uh, Long Island. Uh, he was homeschooled. Get this. Homeschooled, okay, uh, then his parents moved to Poughkeepsie. Uh, he became involved in the mercantile business. Okay, mercantile business, pretty important stuff. Uh, he helped organize the Hollow Presbyterian Church in 1769. Okay, so he was a fundamental believer uh, in his Christianity because Presbyterianism at that time, well, I don't want to get into all of that. Maybe I'll do another program specific to some of that. He was the delegate uh, to the first New York Provincial Congress in 75. Uh, he served the Continental Line Regiment in 75. He organized, uh, let's see, the group called the Dutchess County Rangers. In 77, he became one of the three members of Dutchess County New York Commission for inquiring into, get this, inquiring into, and I'm quoting from the quote, detecting and defeating all conspiracies against the liberties of America. <gasps> Were there conspiracies back then? Oh my goodness, you know, it was, we'd have these uh, communist educators and these left-wing media nutcases, the, the fake news, who have no idea, and I continue to tell you this, they have no idea of the founding nor the foundational intent for America. So what do they do? They run around, do all their other nonsense, and report on all this other garbage, and don't look at what it is about real conspiracy. And, you know, it's kind of outlined a little bit in the Constitution, and you have to read all this other stuff that I take and read and hope I can bring to you from a founder's perspective. Anyway, he served for six months administering oaths of allegiance arresting suspects, informing upon and examining loyalists. Holy schmoly, you mean we're supposed to be loyal to America? And when we look at immigration, we should have, yeah, that is my right hand. Uh, you know, we should take an oath of allegiance? Yeah, you know, that's exactly what it is. You know, all of us Americans that are born into this country forget that those that are true naturalized citizens have to take an oath of allegiance. I've covered that in other programs. So it's something you have to look at as well. But he did that and he found out, you know, and, and these loyalists, those were the ones that were loyal back to the crown. So this was back in 77, he was doing that. What was happening? We still have a little bit of a war going on with England. And so it's trying to determine who were the uh, loyalists slash jihadist of the day. Yeah, because they really were. They were against our liberties. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. People want to say that, you know, we Americans, those colonists, the Sam Adams and all of them, you know, Melanchthon Smith, you know, they were the traitors. They were the ones going against, you know, everything. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, it, anyway. You know, so anyway, he became one of the most important anti-federalists during the state ratification convention in Poughkeepsie in 1788. He uh, made many of the arguments as the federal farmer, which I've talked about on other programs, and there's a lot there. And uh, following the, rat you know, I mentioned this earlier, following the uh, ratification by New Hampshire and Virginia, you know, it came to, okay, uh, we're, we, we got to be in or not in. What are we going to do? And ultimately, the decision for New York was it was more advantageous to be a part of the union than not. And in respect to that, then they still had the convention and they still argued and they still drove to the whole idea of what it would be to uh, bring in some amendments because the first aspect, and the first understanding of uh, the arguments within Constitution uh, and the Constitution that came out in 87 was that, uh, what about the liberties of the people? 
you know, I'm going through this here. You know, we could look at what uh, Richard Henry Lee argued in Brutus. And you got to remember, Robert, I'm sorry, Robert Yates was Brutus. Robert Yates was one of the guys from New York that walked out of the convention. You know, and they argue against Hamilton because Hamilton, if you look at it, listen to some of the other programs, Hamilton wanted a consolidated government. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, Hamilton wanted what you have today. Now, he didn't think that was going to happen, and we're going to talk about that, and we probably won't get to it till maybe the next segment, but I'm giving you this background on this guy. I mean, so what they really got into and what they were talking about is that does the Constitution, as it came out in 87, actually form a system by which your, you, your individual liberties are truly protected according to the true ideas of liberty. You see, what we have in all this toleration stuff and all of these other acts of Congress aren't true liberty, ladies and gentlemen. It's false because these false rights that are coming from either the court or Congress don't fit within the foundational documents, first off, of the Declaration of Independence. Our rights come from God. And so it's only within that framework, and these are the arguments within the frameworks of constitutionalism that even John Locke said, that if a law, John Locke says this, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it. John Locke says that if a law, no matter how just it may look to mankind, if it is outside or contrary to the laws of God, it's not a good law. It doesn't make any sense. It's not something that is within the framework of good governance for society. Well, anyway, we're, you know, scrolling along here and going through a lot of the different things. And I'm going to introduce you a little bit more into um, this debate in New York. Some of the interesting aspects of the debate were that it was really old Hamilton that was taken and hammering away. You see, Hamilton's signature, as I tell you often, is on the Constitution, not because it was authorized to be there by the state of New York, because remember, they pulled out of the convention. No, it was out of kindness that George Washington, for all of the arguments that Hamilton made during the convention, that they allowed Hamilton to sign the, the uh, Constitution. So his signature is more out of, geez, you know, nice you were here, nice contributions, but you know what? Your delegation pulled out because they were against this. So uh, anyway, uh, and, and you get into some of these arguments, and you know what? Hey, you know what? Media... You guys are a bunch of wimps because when you get into what is written uh, by the Anti-Federalists and Melacton Smith in particular, I'm telling you, he's turning around at, at, at Hamilton and he's going, hey, you know what? You just attacked me. You just, you know, nailed. I mean, his words, I'm, I'm scrolling down here a little bit, trying to get to his exact words on, on what Hamilton was hammering away on. But, uh, you know, they go through these observations, they go back through these debates back and forth, and, uh, you know, they try and, and they're challenging one another's reasoning, and, hmm, it gets, it, it, it gets really, it gets dicey, man, I'm telling you, you know, and when you really read these debates, uh, there were uh, real attacks, and attacks on, uh, not, on, you know, on, on personality and stuff like that. Anyway... We're getting close to the end of the segment, but uh, you know, one of the things that we have to look at is that Melanchthon Smith absolutely predicted what we would have in overblown bureaucracy. You know, that's what I really want to focus on, especially as we get in and close out the next segment, is that he looked at everything that was going on and how the Constitution would form and that we would see the buy-offs and the positioning of the bureaucracy as well as Congress becoming millionaires. Really? Hello? They, 
talked about that then? Yeah, they did. And we're going to talk about it in the next segment. So come on back when Samuel Adams returns, the Anti-Federalists, they absolutely got it right. <laughs> 